Hard in Hightown by Varric Tethris Chapter 1 They say coin never sleeps, but anyone who's walked the patrol of Hightown Market at midnight might disagree. The pickpockets and confidence men head to the taverns at dusk. The dwarven businessmen and nobles go back to their tiny palaces to fret over the ways they got cheated, and the market falls silent. Don and Brennikovic knew every angle of the market with his eyes closed. Twenty years of patrols had etched it into him so that he walked that beat even in his dreams. The recruit, Jevlin, was another story. The ring of steel striking stone told Donnan that the kid had stumbled into a column again. His new armor would be full of dents by sunrise. Torches would make this easier. The sound of Jevlin hauling himself off the pavement was like a tinker's cart crashing. Torches make you night blind. You'll adjust. Donnan crossed the square to help the kid to his feet. A breeze scurried across the plaza, sending the banners and pennants shivering and carrying an old familiar scent. Donnan stopped in his tracks. Something's wrong. His voice was low, warning. He peered into the dark, up at the mezzanine just above them. Follow me. Be ready for trouble. The two guards climbed the dark stairs, and there, in a puddle of shadow, found the body. Gold-trimmed satin, glittering through the blood. Get the captain down inside. We've got a dead magistrate. Chapter 2 Magistrate Dunwald's butler had the air of a man who had never risen before dawn in his life. He stared down his nose at Don and Brennikovic and his partner Jevlin, as if he were on some lofty balcony above them, instead of standing in the parlor in his dressing gown. The magistrate is indisposed. This can wait until a reasonable hour. He gestured for the guards to see themselves out. The magistrate is dead, Donnan corrected him. Wake the household. As the butler left, Jevlin shifted uneasily in his new armor. Shouldn't the captain be here? You want to go back to the barracks, be my guest, Donnan said with a shrug, only half listening as he studied the collection displayed in the room. A dozen ancient swords lay nestled in display cases, protected from dust and prying fingers. He moved to lift the lid of the nearest one. Jevlin started to protest, but the doors opened. She had eyes the color of topaz, and dark hair that fell across her brow like sword strokes. She strolled into the parlor with such dignified elegance that Donna didn't realize for several minutes that she was clad in a housecoat and not a ball gown. You have news about my husband? What's Seamus done this time? Forget to pay his bill at the Rose? She seated herself and indicated the guards do the same. Donna nodded at the recruit to speak up. Javelin started. No, Lady Dunwald, actually... She interrupted him with a wave. Marielle, please. L Lady Marielle, your husband has been murdered. Donna took over for the flustered recruit. When did you see him last? Marielle startled at him, her jewel-colored eyes wide open, her voice cracked on. Murdered? Seamus! But a heartbeat may be too past, and she again became the perfect picture of noble grace. I saw him at dinner. She answered in tone anyone might use to comment on the weather. He left before dusk. He said he was going to play Wicked Grace with Comte de Favre. Do you know of anyone who might have wanted him dead? Jevlin asked softly. People want magistrates dead on principle. She gave a wry smile, but her voice grew pained. Criminals, political rivals, even people in his district who disagree with him. She drifted off, lost in thought, and then turned to Donnan, eyes blazing. A week ago, a letter came. Vague threats. I thought it was nothing, but it upset Seamus. Who sent it? Donnan asked. It wasn't signed, but the seal was six crossed swords. Chapter 3 For the second time in what was becoming a very long night, Donan Brenkovic and his partner Jevlin found themselves knocking on a nobleman's door. It was hours before dawn, the sky turning gray around the edges. The steel of Donan's gauntlets clanged against the door once, twice. No answer. He sighed, looking up at the dark windows of the mansion. He was getting too old for this shit. Maybe he's out, Jevlin offered. 
the recruit was nervous. In the guard, a weak and barely able to walk through Hightown. Too green for a murder case. He's hiding. Look up. He shuttered all the windows. There hasn't been a storm in months. He pounded on the door again, louder. We, we should get the captain. Jevlin shifted and squirmed under his heavy shoulder plates. Donnet had forgotten how badly new guard armor fit. He started to tell the kid where to get it adjusted, and the door swung open. Come inside, quickly. A man rushed them inside and through the house. Every room was dark. No moonlight made it through the shuttered windows. No candles flickered. Their way was lit only by a hooded lantern in the hands of their host. He stopped once they had reached a windowless inside room, where he closed and bolted the door behind him. Come to Favre, Don Andy asked. The man nodded. In the dim lantern light, Donan could see that he was dressed in a gaudy brocade doublet, but had thrown a chainmail shirt over it. He wore the helmet from an obviously ceremonial armor set slightly askew on his head. I know why you're here, the Comte whispered. Dunwald. Donan's voice was flat. Did you kill him, your lordship? This is bigger than a murder, the Comte hissed, eyes flicking to the door. Dunwald drew the attention of great powers. When dragons do battle, guardsmen, mortal men can only take cover. Drop the case. Don't draw their gaze. Chapter 4 Don and Brennikovic didn't stand on ceremony. He strode through the barracks and slammed open the door to the captain's office without so much as a nod to the guards he passed. Just barely dawn, and already Captain Hellenden was buried behind a mountain of paperwork taller than the Vinmarks. All Donnan could see of the captain was her fiery hair and an angry gaze that had stopped more than one pickpocket mid-grift. Captain, I need a warrant for the Comte de Favre. Even as the words left his lips, Donnan knew they were a mistake. The captain rose to her feet. Brennikovic? The way she spoke his name was like a portcullis slamming shut. Where's my report on the high town market body? It was the kind of question you might ask a truant child. The kind where you already knew the answer and just wanted to see someone squirm in guilt. I'll file it after. You'll file it now, guardsman! She stepped out from behind the desk. We follow procedure in my barracks. A magistrate was dead, murdered on my watch, Captain. Donnan's voice was heated. He could never keep his temper in her presence. I'm not letting the killer get away. You left the scene without a thorough search of the market. Hendelin began pacing, her voice like cold steel. You harassed a magistrate's widow. You practically broke down a comp's door. She turned to glare at him, all before dawn. If you want a warrant, you damn well better have hard evidence to justify it. I know that Defarve isn't telling us everything, Donnan insisted. Let me bring him in. Forget it. She crossed back to her chair. You've got nothing. You're not arresting a man on a feeling, Brennikovic. Captain, he protested. From behind her paperwork, the captain waved for him to be silent. You're two weeks from retirement, guardsman. You want to stay in the ranks long enough to get pensioned. You follow procedure. Find me evidence and quit wasting my time. Dismissed. Chapter 5 Javelin was waiting outside the captain's office when Don and Brennikovic slunk out, defeated. We're not getting a warrant, are we? Javelin looked almost relieved. No. Don and met his partner's eyes. The kid was barely twenty. It looked like he'd walk straight to the Kirkwall barracks from somebody's potato farm. Taller and broader than the other guards, Javelin slouched as if he didn't know how to fit into his own limbs, as if he thought he should be smaller. Hunched over in his brand new, too large armor, he looked like a child playing at being a guard. He was too green for a murder investigation. Maybe it's for the best, Jevlin said, almost speaking Dunnan's thought out loud. You're on your way out of the guard, and I'm... He trailed off, then sighed. Questioning nobles in the middle of the night wasn't covered in training. Dunnan glared at the kid. I'm a city guard, and so are you, recruit. Nobody gets away with murder while we're on duty. Jevlin stood a little straighter. What do we do then? The captain wants proof, Donnan smiled. We bring our proof. 
Chapter 6 The estates of Hightown fall into three types. The dwarven palaces and their enclave, huddled around their counterfeit paragon statues for shelter against the onslaught of human ideas that surround them. The foreign quarter, where the wealthiest Orlesian and Antivan merchants stay during their twice yearly visits to criticize the ship captains and shop clerks and accountants in their employ. And noble mansions, where families who can trace their lineage back to Orlesian conquerors and Tevinter landlords perch to look down at the rabble of ordinary folk scurrying at their feet. But whoever they belong to, all of Hightown Estates, have two things in common. A showy front entrance, used when the occupants want to be seen, and a hidden back way when they don't. The servant's door to the Comte de Favre's mansion was in an alley hidden by overgrown topiaries. Don and Brnikovic picked the lock while his partner, Jevlin, kept an uneasy lookout. They had left their armor at the barracks, but even in civilian clothes, the recruit managed to look like he was wearing an older brother's hand-me-downs. I don't think this is what the captain meant when she said to get evidence, he muttered. The lock clicked, and Dunnan gently pushed it open. Only a few slivers of light slid through the shuttered windows. Silence hung in the air like a cheap tapestry. Dunnan and Jevlin crept through the dark rooms, alert for any sign of servants. But nothing broke the eerie quiet except their footsteps. In fact, there was no sign that anyone had been in the house at all, until they found the room whose door had been torn from its hinges. Inside, the Comte lay in a pool of blood, one hand clutching a loaded crossbow, a dagger hilt protruding from his back. Chapter 7 Don and Brennikovic searched Comte de Favre's office. Comte lay dead. Murdered while armed and barricaded inside his own home. The servants' rooms were all empty, and from the pulled-out drawers and abandoned trunks, they'd been sent away in a hurry. The Comte had clearly expected trouble, and trouble had come to call. The Comte kept all of his letters. Decades of correspondence, sorted by apparently Kingdom of Origin, filled his writing desk. Donnan rummaged through them, looking for darker ink, fresher pages, anything that might indicate that it was recent. And then came the shattering sound of someone kicking in the front door. Hey, my lord fancy pants, get your ass down here. Jevlin and Donnan ran for the foyer. A woman stood over the splintered door, her eyes glittering brighter than the daggers in her hands. You there, she snapped at the guardsman. Where's the comp de full of it? We need to have some words. One of them will be coin and the other will be now. Kirkwall guard, Donnan barked back at her. This is a crime scene. Identify yourself. Guards are you, she smirked. Squinting up into the dark towards him. No suits of armor outside. Men poking around a noble's house in the dark. This does look like a crime scene. Donnan didn't flinch. Your name. Belladonna. Captain Belladonna of the Dragon's Jewels. She executed a florid bow that somehow managed to be insulting. Where's the damn Comte? He's dead, Donnan said watching her reaction. You wouldn't know anything about that, would you? She cracked a wry smile. Trust me, sweet thing. If I were going to kill him, I'd have waited until he paid me first. What was your business with the Comte? Jevlin spoke up, startling Donnan. He'd almost forgotten his partner was there. Cargo transport. She glowered at the recruit. He hired me to deliver some antiques, and I've been sitting at anchor for a fortnight without being paid. She peered up into the dark balconies overhanging the foyer and shouted, Anybody here? You want this rubbish? Come to the docks tonight and pay me 50 sovereigns for it. Otherwise, I'm dumping it in the sea. With that, she turned on her heel and strode away. Chapter 8 Don and Brennikovic left his partner Jevlin at the barracks. The recruit was even more jittery after the run-in with Captain Belladonna. And although Donnan himself was starting to feel his limbs weighing down and aching after such a long shift, he finally had the scent of something in the case. He wouldn't let it get away. The city of Kirkwall has a legacy of collectors. It was built in ancient times by Tevinters, who collected suffering as if it were rare coins. And they passed on their obsession with obsession to future generations. On any street from Darktown to the Viscount's Keep, you can always find someone who will always buy tapestries or has every known spoon made in Navarra. 
or someone who hoards odd bits and scraps of historical knowledge like it's their grandmother's crockery. Which is how he found himself knocking on a brightly painted door in the alienage. Oh, guardsman! What a nice surprise. Nobody's been mugged, have they? The elf beamed up at him. She had green eyes so wide they barely fit in her face. She seemed to be made of nothing but elbows and knees. No muggings today, Maisie. Donnan had to duck his head slightly to get it through the door. I have something you might be interested in. He handed her the letter the magistrate's wife had given him the night before. Well, this doesn't look very interesting at all, Maisie frowned, disappointed. What you have claimed belongs to greater powers. You will answer to us. That's a lot of rubbish. Not that. Look at the back. She flipped the letter over and cooed as if she'd found a lost puppy. Ooh, just look at you. You're just perfect. Maisie, Donnan spoke in a loud, firm voice, trying to remind her he was still in the room. Whose seal is that? Oh, it's the executors, of course. Maisie peered excitedly at the wax seal, holding it up to the window for better light. I should have guessed it from the silly great powers nonsense. It's only been one example on the letter claiming responsibility for the assassination of Queen Madrigal in 599. And this one is so much better. Just look at the imprint. Any idea how I'd contact these executors? Donnan asked. Oh, they're not real, of course. Everyone knows that. Chapter 9 Donnan Brennikovic was running out of leads to chase. He only had two weeks until retirement. Just two weeks to find the man who'd murdered a magistrate and a high-town nobleman. If Captain Hendelin didn't kick him off the ranks first. The docks stank of piss and rotting fish. As foul as the men and women who worked there. But that was where Donnan had to go to find the raider Captain Belladonna who had broken into Comte de Farm's home. The Dragon's Jewels was a big boat. She liked big boats. The pointy bits towered majestically over the water. That roundish wooden part seemed like it could crush armadas beneath its shit, I don't know, wood. It was the greatest boat in the history of boats. But even from the dock, Donnan knew something was wrong. He ran up the gangplank to find a dead sailor on the deck and a blood trail leading down into the hold. Donnan drew his sword and followed. His eyes still hadn't adjusted to the dimness of the lower decks when he tripped over another dead sailor, stabbed to the gut, and left where he'd fallen. The body was still warm. The ship creaked with every swell of the waves. Donnan held his breath and crept deeper into the hold. He barely deflected the blade in time. Steel rang against steel. Don had parried a second blow, still half-blind in the low light. The third swing got past his guard and left a wicked slash in his forearm. Nobody attacks my crew, you flaming pile of dog shit, the attacker swore. And Donnan recognized her voice. Hold! Kirkwall City Guard, he shouted, barely bringing his blade up in time. You again! Donnan's eyes finally began to adjust and he could make out Captain Belladonna. She was clutching her ribs with her right hand, a dagger in her left, and was covered in enough blood that Donnan was sure it wasn't all hers. She glowered at him. Could have used a guard not five minutes ago, useless as ever. She grudgingly lowered her weapon. Donnan sheathed his sword. Who did this? Don't know. Didn't care to ask, she sniffed. Best it killed two of my men. Before I cut off his hand and he bolted, she waved indifferently towards the rear of the hold. It's over there somewhere. Did he take the comp's shipment? Donnan asked. No. If that's what this is about, you can have it. She limped over to a trunk and removed a bundle of cloth tied with twine. She threw it at Donnan's feet. Good riddance. Chapter 10 Donnan Brennikovic had been pursuing the killer of Magistrate Dunwald without food or rest, and so far all he had was the seal of an imaginary group, a wounded arm, and a package that contained a rusted to Vinter short sword. He was past exhaustion and every breath made his head throb, like he had had too much to drink. He was getting too old for this shit. He couldn't go to the barracks with a knife wound he'd picked up off duty. If the captain caught him, and she would, he'd be thrown out of the guard for sure. That left one option. The Chantry Clinic turned no one away, but it usually didn't have to. 
the presence of three circled healers was more than enough to frighten most decent folk into deciding to wait and see if they got better on their own. Aside from a few drunken beggars snoring in their beds, the clinic was quiet. The healer didn't ask his name and tended the wound with only a disapproving frown. In a few breaths, his arm was as good as ever. Pity magic wouldn't mend his coat sleeve. As he walked through the nave toward the exit, he heard a voice. Guardsman, I was just about to look for you. The deep black gown she wore only made her eyes more otherworldly. A scent like lilacs filled the air around her. She may have been dressed in mourning garb, but she was dressed to kill. Donan bowed. Lady Mariel, we should talk. I may have a lead for you. Chapter 11 The cafe door perched atop a hill in the Orlesian district of Hightown, with a view of the entire city so the wealthy patrons could keep an eye on the peasants toiling below. Lady Marielle studied the room across the rim of her cup. A few nobles sat at the delicate little table, sipping tea from Ravine and whispering among themselves about the latest maneuvers in the grand game a thousand leagues away. What's this lead you have for me? Donan broke the silence, acutely aware that he stank of sweat and fish from the docks and was wearing a ripped, blood-stained coat from the most high-class cafe in Kirkwall. We're being followed, guardsmen. The lady's voice was low. From the tone, she might have been discussing the weather. The two gentlemen in the corner by the door. Donnan picked up his teacup and gestured with it as if to make a point, while he turned slightly in his chair to look. The men were finely dressed, but almost as out of place as he was. A large, sickly pale ender, and with a face full of scars and a tattoo chastened with a stone dagger in his belt. A chastened in a doublet? That's one for the history books, Donnan murmured. Lady Marielle favored him with a half-smile. Last night, a man came by the estate. He said he wanted to buy Seamus's collection. All of it. Donnan sat up straighter. The swords. He said his name was Wagner. She sipped delicately at her tea. He gave me an address in Lowtown, in case I changed my mind. Those two have been shadowing me ever since. Chapter 12 They say you can buy anything in the Lowtown Bazaar. It's mostly true. On the right day, you can find vendors hawking spices from Saharan, the legacies of unknown dwarven paragons, maps to hidden fortresses in the Donarchs, and the crown jewel of Antiva. No bookstore in Thetis peddles more wild stories than Lowtown. Donan Brenikovic made a point of greeting each shopkeeper as he passed, so that the continual chant of guardsmen reached to the ears of two large men shadowing him since he'd left Lady Marielle in Hightown. The address she'd given him led to a warehouse in the Foundry District, a section of the city populated only by rusted metal spikes and vagrants. Donan knocked on the door. An immaculately dressed butler greeted him and gestured for him to enter. Guardsman Brenikovic. Monsieur Wagner has been expecting you. Donnan followed him through a labyrinth of warehouse offices to a back room richly appointed with silk carpets and tapestries, depicting the execution of Andraste. Two heavy armchairs upholstered in velvet occupied the center of the room. In one sat a smug, red-haired man dressed entirely in blinding white samite. The other chair was empty. Godsman! Please sit, the gentleman spoke with a heavy Starkhaven accent. I suppose you would be Monsieur Wagner, Donan asked. I'm a procurer of antiquities, Sir Abernikovic, as I'm sure the Lady Dunwald explained. Wagner carefully lit a pipe made of carved bloodstone and inhaled. But we are both men of business, guardsmen. You are soon to retire, are you not? Allow me to present you with an opportunity. Donan turned a critical eye on the tapestry of Andraste's pyre. I'm listening. Wagner watched him through a veil of smoke. Do you know what Seamus Dunwald had in his possession, guardsman? What made the poor man worth killing? Do tell. The Sword of Hesarium. Wagner leaned forward, studying him closely. The very blade that pierced Andraste's heart. Donan gave him a flat stare. If I believe that were even possible, 
I think that blade would be worth a lot of coin. Most would look at it and see a rusted piece of scrap. It's no longer the jeweled blade of an archon. But to the right buyer guardsman, the sword is worth an empire's ransom. I know such buyers, Wagner smiled. It is here, in Kirkwall. And if you help me find it, I can make you a very rich man. Chapter 13 In the Lowtown Bazaar, Donnan paused to pay a little elven girl to play courier for him before making the long climb back uphill to Hightown. A careful glance told him that the scar-faced Ander and tattooed Chasen were still tailing him. Donnan was certain they'd love the Viscount's keep. He passed beneath the stone gaze of the Carmorant statues, flagging the gates, and nodded to the guards on his way to the barracks. No one noticed his ragged, bloody clothing, which disappointed him as much as he benefited from it. Recruits these days, always slacking off. Donnan bypassed the captain's office and went looking for Jevlin. By now, the kid ought to be rested up, and Donnan suspected he would need backup if his large, suspicious shadows decided to pick a fight. But Jevlin's bunk was empty. Donnan noted blood splatter on the bedding, and a scent like lilacs. All of his gear was missing, and the center of the bunk was a note. Bring the blade to the quays tonight at midnight, or the boy dies. It was signed with a wax seal. Six crossed swords. Chapter 14 The late Magistrate Dunwald's butler blinked as Don and Brennikovic barged into the foyer. Get Lady Marielle, now! He headed straight to the parlor, where the Magistrate's collection was displayed. Wrapped in a black shawl, Marielle sauntered into the room and leaned against one of the glass cases. Guardsman, what a pleasant surprise. Where is Jefflin? Her smile faltered. Why do you think I would know? He's your partner. Donnan held up the note. Your perfume, Lady Marielle. He dropped it on the display case beside her. What were you doing in the guard barracks? I didn't leave the note, she said with measured calm. And I don't have your partner. But you were in the barracks. He stepped away to examine a display. You told me Wagner wanted to buy the Magistrate's entire collection, but he said he was only interested in one blade. He opened the case. And I think it was never in Seamus's collection. I think it was the sword meant to go right here. He pointed to the empty velvet-lined box. I looked in the Viscount's records, and you've only been married to Magistrate Dunwald for about three weeks. You tell me who you're working for, and where my partner is, and I'll see if we can't get you a deal with the Viscount's office. The Chantry. Marielle closed the door quietly. They sent me to Kirkwall a few months ago, when rumors of the sword began to surface. She examined the note. I don't have Jeflin. This was already on his bunk when I went to find both of you. Donnan didn't hide his skepticism. You're innocent, but you didn't report him missing to any of the guards. Someone took him from the barracks, Sirrah, with no one the wiser. That doesn't seem strange to you. She looked him in the eye. Have you ever heard of the executors? They're a myth. A myth that kills, she sighed. The executors have your partner, and I think they have someone inside the city guard. How else could they have gotten Jevlin out? of the keep without being seen. Donnan watched her fidget with her shawl. Where were you in the barracks? I suspected the executors had an inside man, she shrugged. How else could they have gotten poor Comte de Favre to open the door to his killer? Since he arranged the sword's purchase for Seamus, he's been hiding in his own home. The only people he'd see were Seamus and you. Chapter 15 The nobles of Hightown like to imagine that petty crime can only happen in the dank shadows of Darktown, or maybe the crooked alleyways of Lowtown between the alienage and the poorest neighborhoods. Their lofty, ivy-walled avenues could never be the site of something as crude as a mugging or simple assault. Donnan didn't have much trouble finding an out-of-the-way alcove near the Chantry to wait for the scarred Ander and tattooed Chasen to catch up with him. The Ander came at him first, dropping down from the balcony above his head. When Donnan tried to back out of his reach, the Chasen loomed behind him, clamping an enormous vice-like hand on his shoulder. 
The Anders follow-up punch just below his ribs knocked the air out from his lungs. As the chase and lifted him, up, lifted him up by his coat, Dunnan got back enough of his breath to say, You work for Wagner? I need to give him a message. This earned him a skeptical look from the Ander, but the chastened set his feet on the ground. Tell him I have his sword. It can meet me in the quays at midnight to settle for a price. For a long, nervous moment, Donnan watched a variety of expressions pass over the Ander's scarred, grayish face before the man nodded. Another long moment, and both Ander and Chasen walked away, leaving him alone in the alcove. With the sun just setting, there was only one place left that Donnan needed to go. The tavern in the center of Lowtown sat in its own tiny moat of spilled ale, vomit, and the seawater the owner flung at the walls in a half-hearted attempt to scour the seagull crap from the building. Donnan, like nearly every guardsman who drank at the Hanged Man, walked through the door to a frantic chorus of put it away hurry he tried not to smile and completely succeeded when the brooding white-haired elven bartender greeted him with a murderous glower guardsman donnan placed a handful of copper coins on the bar keep the ale coming ferris i've got some time to kill chapter 16 donnan left the tavern headed out through the moonless night. Fog clung to the streets and buildings like cobwebs, and the heavy air threatened rain. Any other night, he would have gone straight up the barracks, but he had appointments to keep. The quays at midnight exchanged the cacophony of swearing sailors for the mournful sound of distant bells in the harbor. Donnan found Wagner and his two thugs waiting just out of sight of the harbor master's office. In the fog, Wagner's white Samite coat made him gleam like a smug moon. Monsieur Brennikovic, I trust you've brought my merchandise. Wagner smiled. Beside him, the tattooed and chastened cleaned what might have been blood from his nails with his dagger. Donnan reached into his coat, pulled out a small cloth-wrapped bundle. We should discuss a few things first. Wagner's eyes gleamed in the reflected light of his paunch. The price, of course. He gestured to the scarred Ander, who held up a bag of coins. One hundred crowns should suffice, yes? That depends. Donnan toyed with the twine, securing the bundle's wrapping. You killed Magistrate Dunnell, didn't you? After my run-in with your friends here, I realized the only blade that could have made that kind of stab wound was your chasen's stone knife. Wagner shrugged. Men die all the time, Sirrah. We should not let that unpleasantness get in the way of business. Another gesture, and the Ander strode forward to stand just inches away from Donnan, brandishing the bag of gold like a flail. And Jevlin? Donnan asked. I know nothing of your partner's fate. Donnan handed over the bundle, and Ander dropped the bag at his feet to deliver the prize to his boss. Wagner eagerly unwrapped the bundle, revealing an ancient, rusty, pitted short sword. He frowned. This is not the blade. Both Chastened and Ander drew their daggers. Donnan held his ground. Pity you killed Dunwald for it, then. You think I'd kill a magistrate and not a guardsman? Wagner laughed. Unwise, Sirrah. That's all we needed to hear. Captain Hendelin stepped around the corner behind Donnan, a dozen guards with her. For the first time in months, he saw what might have been a smile on her face. Good work, guardsman. We'll take it from here. Chapter 17 Donnan left it to his captain and a dozen of Kirkwall's finest to drag Wagner and his thugs to the stocks. The heavy air gave up and turned into sheets of rain. The ancient gray stone stairs leading up to Lowtown turned into a waterfall. Donnan slogged up the narrow passage, boots squelching with every step. He almost didn't hear the ambush coming. As he reached the top of the stairs, a faint rasp of steel made him throw himself aside into a vegetable seller's table. A sword rung through the air where he'd been and chimed against the rock wall. Donnan fumbled at his scabbard and just managed to catch the second blow with his sword. He had one moment as they locked blades to recognize the attacker. The young man had shed his guard uniform for dark leathers and his arm now ended in a bandaged stump 
but there is no mistaking him. Jevlin. Where's the blade of Hesarian? Jevlin recovered from the parried blow to slash at Donnan's legs. He dodged back, slipping and nearly stumbling, asked first, down the stairs. It was you, the inside man. You're the one who killed Defara. Donnan lunged at the recruit. Jevlin quickly moved a block, but Donnan's blade sliced his arm, drawing blood. Give me the sword. I know that pirate hag gave it to you. Jevlin swung a series of hard slashes, trying to break Donnan's guard or knock him down the stairs. In the darkness and the driving rain, the guardsman struggled to see his attacker. Still, Donnan grinned. You left it at the quay. I guess you ran off without it when the lady took your hand off. Not my fault you picked a fight you couldn't win. He tried to edge his way away from the stairs, but the rookie kept him pinned between the vegetable stall and a fall to his death. Jevlin lunged, his blade punching through Donnan's armor just below his ribs. But the recruit slipped on the wet stone during his attack and stumbled into his enemy. Donnan shoved him away and over the stairs. His fall ended with a sickening crack of broken bones. Donnan drew a ragged breath and pulled Jevlin's sword from his side, trying not to slip on his own blood. The Chantry was a long way off. Chapter 18 The rain stopped with a suddenness that suggested some enterprising footpad from the coterie had climbed up to shank the clouds. The fog drifted off to haunt a better part of the wounded coast, and as Donnan reached the Chantry Courtyard, clouds parted to let a sliver of moonlight shine on the rain-swept flagstones. He stopped to catch his breath and tighten the torn-off coat sleeve he'd used as a bandage. The bleeding was slowing, which meant that either the wound in his side wasn't that deep, or he was running out of blood to lose. Trying not to dwell on the latter, he pushed open the Chantry doors. At this maker-forsaken hour, the Chantry was lit only by the eternal flame at Andraste's feet. A single soul occupied the space, lighting a candle for the dead. She rose as Donnan staggered into the firelight. Guardsman! Lady Marielle rushed to help him into one of the pews. Might want to wake up one of the healers, he managed a pained smile. I wasn't sure you'd be here. Neither was I. Your message was a little vague. Marielle tried to examine his makeshift bandage, but Donnan waved her away. He pointed towards the golden statue of Andraste. I had a friend deliver something for you, under the altar. Marielle cast him a skeptical look, but she climbed the dais and returned with a small oilcloth bundle. She picked apart the wrapping's knot and peered down at the rusty blade inside, specks of dried blood still clinging to the pitted guard. The sword of Hesarian. She breathed, almost a prayer. Can you get it to the divine? Donnan asked. She wiped at her eyes. I'll take it to him myself. What do you want in return? Donnan struggled to his feet. Just put in a good word for me with the Maker, your ladyship. You never know when I might need it. And he walked away, leaving her standing in the firelight with history in her hands. <laughs>